Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. So, who is here for CIS? All right, show of hands. Ah, okay. Looks like some of them are still awake. Uh, you, you enjoying it? Good lunch, all that? Not too bad. On brand. <laughs> Well, folks, this is our uh, logout panel discussion. And just a brief story, uh, last year when I was uh, giving the presentation that I, that I gave at CIS, we got the Q&A section, I think probably a good three-fourths of that uh, Q&A time frame, which we ran over, thankfully, into an empty slot. There wasn't somebody we were impeding on, but we ran over and uh, three quarters of that time was spent with people asking questions and we were discussing logout uh, and the problem that it, it is. And so that got me thinking when the call for, for presentations came all around here, I said, hey Andy, I, I, I like the idea of a logout panel discussion. Because this is a summit, we should come together and we ought to discuss this kind of thing. And hopefully as an industry, we can come up with the next step, uh, the next steps, the next uh, exploration that we need to do and find a way to do that better. So, well, here we are. <laughs> and just first we'll introduce our panelists. We'll start off here with uh, Brian. Uh, Brian, will you give us just kind of the, the brief bio? Uh, Brian Campbell, uh, many of you probably know me from running around this event with a camera, but uh, I also work on uh, product development at Ping as well as uh, work on open standards uh, relating to all the various things that, uh, that we do here. Well, not all of them, some of them. Great. Thanks, hey, everyone. Brian. Uh, my name is Ian Barnett. Um, I'm an old SSO guy. Uh, I've worked with Brian in the past. Um, everything from old school web access management through Federation now today. So um, been wrestling with log on and log off for uh, 18 years, <laughs> ever since I logged on. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. And uh, I'm Lamont Peterson. Um, <clears throat> I have been doing a lot of the SSO and uh, identity management types of things where I've been working the last uh, couple of places for the last decade or so. But in my career, I uh, spent about the first 10 years of it doing a lot of software engineering. And that meant building apps and dealing with logging in and uh, identifying the users and uh, things they were, were dealing with, of course, and uh, logging out. And I think uh, what we'd uh, like to do to start out here is just sort of define that question, you know, what is the uh, the problem with logout? And uh, I'm going to start with a with a simple explanation that I came up with and I used with development team uh, for a lunch and learn, and it helped open some eyes there. So I'm I'm hoping it'll help get us all on a similar page. And basically, it's let's look at the historical perspective. You know, we go back in time and we have our mainframe computer and our dumb terminals. And we have users attaching to the application, attaching to the machine. So where is the application at, right? What is the context of having to deal with logging in and then to be logged out? It's all controlled in one spot. We move forward in time, we have you know, maybe some PCs and netware or whatever, and we have our application, same kind of architecture, really. We move forward in time into the late 90s and early 2000s, and we say, okay, now we're doing web apps. The web application, it's on the server, the client is on the browser, there's a little bit of a stretch, stretching between those two, but essentially, we built a lot of apps that all stood on their own. They had their own database, their own users, their own login. And so when we dealt with logging in or logging out, it was all dealt with right there. So we had uh, complete, consistent control from that single point. And then we started to have two applications and 10 applications and 20 applications and 200 applications in our enterprises, in our businesses. Even a small company could easily have five or six different things they would log into. And of course, with the various services available on the internet, 
you would go and log into, you know, uh, Google Docs or something, and that's a separate login. Well, wait a minute, why does this have to be separate? Enter SSO. So now what we do is we decouple the authentication from the applications themselves. We put the responsibility for authentication somewhere else in a central and a better and a safer place to control it, and that was a good decision. Okay, I'm gonna reiterate, that was a good decision, right? <clears throat> and I, at least I think so. I don't know if panelists here will agree. Yeah, we're getting some nods. And I'm seeing a few nods out in the audience. So the problem we have now is where is that context of your authentication session? We still dealt with our application session. We just decoupled the authentication. The application session itself, it sets its own session cookie, it goes on with life, it really is completely oblivious to the fact that there is SSO, that there are other applications, they still stand alone. And I think this partly leads to our problem with logout. And uh, Brian, I'll let you uh, comment there on what the problem with logout is. How much time do we have? <laughs> um, in my mind, the problem with logout uh, is sort of multi-tiered. And there's, there's, I see three, three primary issues with it. One is um, a technical problem that the various methodologies and ways of actually ending a, a session somewhere, be it on a, a web application or device, is, is often straightforward in the context of just that. But as Lamont mentioned, as you move the actual origin of the authentic authentication somewhere for single sign-on, it, it becomes much more difficult to describe and um, initiate and terminate those sessions at various reliant parties or other application systems that are relying on some other system to do, to do logout uh, or the initial login. Another problem with logout, I think, is a, is a failure of the standards to adequately address the needs, um, and not by not providing the functionality, but providing too much functionality. Um, I cut my teeth uh, developing SAML standards, um, and the sign-on part was not easy, but it was sort of comprehensible, and it made sense, and there was, there was sort of a path through the system. But you look at logout, um, and there's a multitude of different options, both for delivering these logout messages in the front and the back channel, and what that means for the applications that sit behind them. Some applications aren't able to terminate a user session without the um, context of the user's browser there. So, but they still, there were some contributors that wanted that functionality, so you have these various options of front and back channel. You have the options to list individual sessions for a particular user or not in some cases, trying to accommodate use cases like an administrative logout where there's no user present at all. Um, and at some level, all these make sense in a certain context, but you have a standard that tries to accommodate all of them and implementations that oftentimes can only accommodate one little subset of these use cases and you res what the result is, is a complete lack of real true interoperability around these different, um, different use cases, if you will, for how logout is supposed to work. Um, and I think perhaps though the, the largest problem with logout is mismatched expectations about how it's really supposed to work. And I think a lot of that is context dependent as well. That there are certain situations where this idea of a single logout makes sense where you establish sessions that rely on parties based off of one initial login, and you want to terminate all those at once, sort of the, at least what I think of the, the classical definition of single logout. There are often times where that's not the expectation of the end user or, or the deployers of the application, that maybe you just want to terminate uh, one of the single sessions that you, that's been um, established off the initial login and not affect all the rest. If you think about like a workforce to SaaS deployment, it, does it really make sense for um, one of eight SaaS applications that I'm using during the day to be able to dictate to my corporate IDP and all the other SaaS applications that I'm using to terminate all those sessions? I, I guess in some scenarios maybe it does, others it doesn't. I remember um, we've, we finally changed it, but we, we, we make use of all this stuff. We have a lot of SaaS apps and a, a local IDP that SSOs out and we had one of those SaaS apps sort of strangely configured to call back um, when you logged out of it individually to call back and terminate your session 
locally. And I would always forget that. And I, was, I would accidentally log out of there trying to, I don't know, have good security hygiene because when I'm done, I log out. And it would always pop back and kill my session that I was using to log into other applications. I would get frustrated by it. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world I log in again, but depending on the context, the user expectations are very different for what logout means. Um, and that's even amongst people that kind of know what's going on, what, where these messages are flying, where the actual sessions are, are established. And uh, I think when you look at just your average end user consumer of a website, they don't have the sophistication or the interest to care, like is there a session cookie on my browser for this website and what does it mean when I log out here and go over here? And, and you'll get different sets of expectations and trying to accommodate that both at the standards level and at the implementation level and, and get it all to work together is, um, I dare say, almost an intractable problem. When uh, Lamont asked me if I would, I would be on this panel, I said I'd be happy to participate, but I want to warn you in advance that I, I, I think of myself as kind of a single logout nihilist. Um, and so uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very difficult problem, and I think the newer standards that have come along since SAML, and just ba I bashed SAML log out there for a while, um, largely because I had to implement it, um, and implement it in a product that was uh, uh, agnostic to the actual systems holding onto the session. So I had, to, I had to work with all the back channel, front channel, various things at, at sort of one abstraction level that made it even more difficult. But the newer standards, I think, have made matters even worse, uh, as well as sort of the march of technology. Now, not only do we have web applications and web application sessions, which are difficult as I've described, but sort of reasonably comprehensible. Um, we now have mobile devices and mobile applications and an even broader set of expectations in both directions about how those behave with respect to logging out. I've heard people ask and, and um, you know, potential customers ask, like, how do we do single logout combined with OAuth? So they want to have log out, terminate all the web sessions, and terminate all the access tokens or refresh tokens that may have been bootstrapped off that initial session that may have been issued by a different provider even because there was a web SSO to another provider who issued their own access token. And there's, there are some people that, that desire the log out chain, if you will, to, to terminate all of that. Well, at the same time, um, I was hearing someone, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, complain about changing their password due to password reset forgetting their password to bring a new Netflix device online, bring a new TV online, and then having to reset all the other TVs. Um, so there's, which is almost the opposite. Like in, in my daily uses, once I've established something on a device, a phone or a TV or whatever, I actually don't want that logged out ever, um, unless there's some sort of security occurrence where, where I need to force the issue. In general, I, I want those sessions to remain. So. Um, we, we struggle with that. And then on top of that, as you look at the standards, there's, uh, there was no logout baked into the OpenID Connect um, initial specification. There was a parallel specification defining a, a session management, which was sort of like logout. Um, it's been in draft for five or six or seven years now and not fully ratified. And since that time, there's been two more specifications developed in parallel with it that define both a front channel logout mechanism, where it's a, a browser redirect flow, as well as a, uh, a back channel direct server to server um, piece. So it's, it's actually sort of like all the issues I described with SAML, but a, a new variant, which is that session management bit, which is a, um, I think it was a valiant attempt to try to address the problem from a different perspective. It, it uses some front channel JavaScript mechanisms to try to do notification in a way that's a little bit more scalable. But due to legacy applications and a variety of other reasons, it, it never really caught on. So what's resulted in is even a broader set of possibilities that are spread across different standards that haven't even been ratified yet. Um, that, that just make the possibility of interoperability, let alone getting to the place where expectations are met, um, much, much more difficult. I don't know, did I cover everything? Probably not, are but. <laughs> are we good? Yeah. <laughs> yep. So thanks for being here and uh, for Brian <laughs> taking, no. Brian's taking um, questions now. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, actually, Brent, you brought up a couple of things in there that uh, as you're going along, I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciating. And, and one of those I wanna mention uh, I'm going to mention a couple and, and kind of touch on here, I think, is where it comes to the end user. And that difference is, you know, we here 
uh, how, how many in the audience really feel like that you've got a, a grasp on logout? Who has it covered? Who's happy with it? I don't know how to log out. Like who within the right. organization thinks that they have logout covered? Okay, it works. It works for me. Can't say it's right for every. Yeah, the the thing of it is, is I love that that you. The very first thing I heard anybody shout out there was, "Well, what do you mean by that question?" And and it's it's kind of like, "Well, take what you want," as you know, because there are a lot of meanings to that, <clears throat> right? And uh, so you know, for end users, uh, getting logged out. If you really, if the real intention is, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna kick you out of everything," if you hit log out on one of our twenty seven apps that you're logged into 15 of them right now, you're gonna be logged out of 15 of them. And if the end user doesn't understand that, then that can lead to, even in the case of somebody who knows how that works, can lead to, oh, wait a minute, I just pulled a, a lever I didn't intend to pull. But, you know, when you deal with that, whether it's a front channel or a back channel operation, you really need to do something to let the user know what's going on. And, this was one of the questions that came up a lot last year. It got me thinking about things too, and I, you know, I kind of came up with this idea of a contextual logout where, you know, if if we have the right information, can we provide that context to the user to say, here are the ten apps you're going to log out of if you continue on with this. Uh, you know, go ahead and you know maybe you, you you choose two of them that you're not logging out of, but that, does that mean that you're logged out of these apps even though your authentication is going to have to stay there. And I think that's a good way to characterize part of the problem is, is it all or nothing? And if it isn't all or nothing, then what halfway in between makes any sense at all? Any question? Right. No, keep going. You're fine. Keep going. We can hear you. Uh, He's just going to bring you the mic so everyone else can hear you. It is mainly because of the reaction that they get from their end user, which claims if you don't do an all or nothing log off, that they aren't, because they can go back to an app and hit the login button and never be prompted for their credentials, at which point now it's a security risk. They claim it's a security risk because they haven't, they clicked the log out button, but they weren't actually logged out. You failed somehow. Yeah, and so the basic example there being like, for example, uh, your public computer, you know, the public library. If you're not logging out, though, then what are you doing? You're leaving, you're, you're leaving users vulnerable. But that type of application typically is not going to be something that maybe we have you logged into 10 different things or where, you know, really the SAML type of approach or something comes into play. So there's, there's a lot of balance to be had. It's really, does this only apply to the, to the corporate uh, environment though? This is B2C. Right. So, um, and then I, I like the Netflix example as well that you brought up because, uh, you know, there are certain applications and devices where uh, I agree with you totally on that kind of a thing. I've got this Apple TV on it. I've got my PS3 on Netflix. I've got my phone. I've got my iPad, and I've got my computer. And you know what? I don't want to deal with reauthenticating to those all the time. So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I've been doing SSO a while, and it, it was interesting to kind of see the transition over the last decade or two, right? When we had you know, with the, the advent of the web and everyone throwing up a web server as fast as they could within the corporate network, right, that created almost a little mini federation problem, right? And so how do we fix it? We came up with SiteMinder and we came up with, you know, Tivoli and Oracle and OpenSSO uh, and we kind of locked it down and controlled it and, you know, we had, a, we had our own security domain um, and we had a, a point of control at each place, you know, where that shared session was. Um, and then we turned around and federated everything. We basically blew it up and created a giant extranet um, with that same lack of, you know, kind of, you know, pre-old school web SSO, you know, um, you know, architecture. We've kind of exploded that back out, out of, out of control again. And, you know, the, the spec is, is heavy, it, it covers a lot of stuff, 
Um, I, I don't actually have a problem with the spec from, an, from, a, from a logout perspective. I think um, what I've kind of, people may disagree with me, but I, it's almost a disconnect between the app developers and the spec, right? And so I think when the, like for, when the SAML spec was written and we started talking about front channel bindings, I think we were thinking like eight apps and we controlled them all, right? It wasn't 150 apps and we control none of them. Um, and so I think part of it was in, it feels a little bit like intent, not intent, but like the scope blew right. faster than the spec, right? Uh, and then I see a little bit where, you know, there are still things in SAML, so like a back channel SOAP call will work if the app developers know to, to not rely upon the spec in the front, or the session in the front channel, right? right. And so it's kind of this delegation of session management now where oh, I'm just gonna let Tomcat handle it for me. I'm gonna create it within my application server and it's gonna handle it and if the user doesn't come back with it, oh well, if the user's logged out or if the cookie's invalid for whatever reason, it's done, right? There wasn't that extra step to hold on to that internally, tie that session to the user's identity and expose and tie that back to the web service that the spec was you know, um, defining so that when that call was made, you could do that, finish that logout without having that kind of daisy chain event. Um, and right. so for me, right, the, the, the spec is the spec. It's not bad, um, but it is fragile. Um, there are a lot of dependencies that have to happen, but I think that's partly because how we d we've developed apps, um, right? If it's, if right, the app is right. designed the way the spec thinks it's going to interact with it, I think you end up with a more robust, reliable type logout thing where you can be that selective, right? And it, it ends up being more web services based. Could be. Is that just generalizing just that or? Yeah, just logout. Yeah, it's more SAML okay. from a logout perspective. I, I, um, I'll, defer, I'll defer to yeah. Brian on I'll OpenID Connect just out of <laughs> uh, my smartness. <laughs> so we have questions. Well, let me, let me suggest a thought to go with that is that, you know, I, I, I've got my workstation there and I lock the workstation. Now I've got the 20 apps that I've been using in the day sitting there logged in on a locked machine. And, you know, we could kind of apply that same model with your mobile device or what have you. Uh, what value is there to logging out all of those things that are on that otherwise locked and controlled resource? But can we... Can we go with that kind of a model in the future if we, um, if, and, and we have to secure then, of course, the correct point. And the identity of the user, you know, yeah, that concept of once you're logged in, stay logged in, could apply to all kinds of very sensitive things as well. And right. Yeah, re-verify the authentication, yep. Be nice. Yeah, we have another question uh, back here. Yeah, it's not much of a question, but um, something that I've seen and that we've set up for a customer. Um, customer facing, uh, we, we, d we dealt with uh, session inactivity um, um, timeouts, and actually the more you used a specific right. device, the longer the session timeout was set. Uh, until you, you, you came to a point that we decided that that was your machine and you never logged in again, a, a, a bit like, like Google does 
uh, with any machine you use, mm -hmm. except there uh, we, we, we implemented something that if it's the first time you log in on, on that PC, uh, it's a two minute session timeout, uh, inactivity timeout, I, I, I mean. And, and it grows uh, day for from days to days. If, some, if someday there is a second user on that same device, then we go back to, um, to two minutes uh, inactivity timeout. It seems to work. We, we, we don't have uh, uh, much uh, customer bad feedback on, on the outline, whether it, it's bad or not. Maybe they just rent uh, uh, on their side and, and they don't take the, the, the phone. That's, uh, it seems to, 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 to work so far. Thank you. You have another? So we are actually leveraging some kind of a session management, but in the sense of uh, uh, from different angle. We don't like like uh, the when either no no log out or log out all because log out all it doesn't really make sense to us. And um, what we actually entertain some kind of solution is. Uh, you don't quite log, when the SP or relying party send a logout request, we don't really log out, we only log you out. So like uh, make a sense to say, this is coming from this client, so therefore any subsequent login request from the same client will actually almost entertain a force off. So, so to this particular uh, up, uh, user that log out from this app, the user is logging out but it won't destroy the IDP session, so where the other, um, if user want to single sign to other apps, uh, it will continue to be function as a single sign. So don't, one app do not break another apps. Well, let's, uh, yeah, a couple of panelists comment on that. Any comments? No. Uh, a few comments to uh, to some of the previous comments. One, uh, I would like to say, uh, despite my nihilism, I, I do think there's um, a lot more potential in a future of sort of long-lived sessions, um, almost never-ending sessions, with some sort of risk metric applied to continual re-authentication and trying to I think it's a long, a long view kind of thing, but starting to get users trained at the idea that authentication is an anomalous event, and that certainly there's times when it's going to happen, but really they should be on the lookout. They should, something may be a little bit off when, when they're prompted for authentication. That, in combination with local locks on devices, be that just a pen code or some kind of biometric or something, but to, to sort of protect the overall thing. So. Um, just following your comments, I'm, I, I think maybe that's the long view and, and, and a, a, better, a better potential future for these things. With that said, there are certainly certain deployments um, where you need something like a, a, what we think of as traditional single logout, um, be it you know, certain regulatory requirements around having a, a session terminated that, that may come along to, to where sessions and, and things are going, but they're going to lag, so that it'll be a while, or maybe... Um, you mentioned like the public library or, or kiosk type use cases where it's not a device that you physically own. Um, but I, I think those are the exception rather than the rule and the, the attempts of at least the standards to sort of cover all the basis make it very difficult. And I think those maybe will be more, um, not niche, but, but sort of uh, trying to think of a word that's not, doesn't sound derogatory, sort of one-off, not one-off. <laughs> Specialized, specialized deployments of these things to get them to work to, to meet those use cases. Snowflakes. <laughs> I struggle a little bit. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, I, I guess, I, I, and I wanted to follow up uh, with uh, sort of it, switching gears. It sounded like um, you were saying that when you take a log out from uh, an individual client or relying party, you, you maintain state almost as tracking the fact that that particular client was logged out for that particular user so as to, for that session. To sort of, but you, you do the force off sort of locally to, based on that determination, to try to give the, the appearance of a, 
of the log in, log off having previously worked. I, I guess I cringed a little bit when you said that because we've had we've had similar requests that I've I've resisted adding that kind of functionality, largely just for the overhead of the tracking the state, and and tracking the state of sort of that um, negative positive tracking that you need to remember that somebody's previously logged out here in order to log them in at another party. It, it um, well, I, I understand the drivers, but it, it's. Yeah, you have to keep positive state about the lack of state. <laughs> I, I understand the drivers, it just, yeah, it's. But if they, if they go to a new relying party with the same IDP, they'll be silently logged in. Yeah. I'm gonna I, I'm I'm gonna side with Brian here a little bit. That makes me cringe as well because I'm sitting here saying, okay, well, not only at the level that you're talking about, just in a single instance, but now uh, and and you know, Ian and I were just saying, <clears throat> hey, that's multiplication. You've got users times applications. You're building this matrix, but I'm gonna add a third dimension because now you're also fracturing your session, and the the point of single sign-on is that you really have a single session, but is you know. And that might be one of the areas that the industry needs to go have that conversation uh, about and say, look, is that really a single session at the core? And what is authentication? You know, separating authentication from authorization, you have to think about that here too, I think. And uh, in, in that vein, you can start saying, okay, we got all sorts of things we're starting to look at, attribute-based access controls, you know, all sorts of things in order to make better authorization decisions but with authentication and logging in and logging out is uh, still a core problem. In, well, yeah. And even then, not to make things, you know, not to be uh, split hairs, right? But is, is single sign-on, is it, I mean, is it a, is it a, I mean, is it an, an experience or is it a defined thing, right? So we say single session, but that's, that's kind of an assumption. Right, because single sign-on from a user experience is I go from A to B. Right, what what happens? Right, there there's we're autom there's automatically kind of an assumption that it's one session and maybe one at A and one at B, but it might be you know depending on how things happen, you could have many sessions. Uh, right, it's kind of that interaction I guess from a maybe from a user perspective. Right, how many times do I am I interacting with? you know, my contextual authentication or my second factor or whatever it is or my retinal scan or my DNA thumbprint or, you know, whatever it might be to, to prove that, you know, I'm the guy sitting on the dais. At yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, absolutely. And I, I think uh, uh, I, I think that's a very good point. Um, and, and I'm liking this because we're, we're talking about, you know, characterizing what are some of the problems and some of the solutions that people have found, are, uh, and I, I don't want to even use the word solutions, kind of going to where you were searching for the right word. I'm going to say workarounds um, and, and perhaps use that word. Uh, one more comment and then we'll move on to our next. Can I just, yeah, please. I, I hope, I, I didn't mean to come across as critical of your implementation or choices, but I think it's indicative of what I said earlier about the, the disparate spread of expectations. Your, your development team, your users had a certain set of ex expectations about how it behave and you did something to meet those expectations and it's just it it's different than some other expectations and I think it, overall it underscores the point that that there are so many different types of expectations and actually meeting them in a, in a coherent way is very difficult so I hope you didn't take offense to my my cringing <laughs> no yeah agreed and and it uh, so, you know I'll, I'll echo that same sentiment it's uh, when I said, yeah, that makes me cringe a bit too, and I'm thinking about some of the things about dealing with that implementation, but also how it could become fragile. And uh, however, I, I totally agree. Really what it comes down to is what, in my vision of what 
I want to see happen over the next couple of years in the whole industry looking at logout and coming up with the solution, I know one solution is not the answer, but is that really it comes down to that end user expectation as well. Um, we have our security requirements, we have our regulatory compliance requirements, et cetera, but it really comes down to what the end user sees. And let's ask this uh, kind of next question. Uh, do you use a computer at work? Anybody in the room here use a computer at work? Yeah? At home? You know, maybe you do your online banking or you do, uh, you know, order uh, little ceramic cats from Amazon, you know, uh, eBay, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, you know, where, where are the, the problems going to exist? And so I'm kind of shifting a little bit to that end user perspective perhaps with this question. Uh, Ian, you want to start? <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, from a user expect, we, it's funny, we, we had a, we did a passwordless, come, uh, you know, we do a, a passwordless presentation, we've done it at the Gartner show, um, we've talked about the, the identity user group in Denver, and it morphed into um, user expectation and the creepy factor, right? And, and, and this is a, an odd segue into the difference between home and work and what your expectation is. Right, and I think at uh, at work we have a lot more control over that environment and what happens um, from an IT policy. Right, we can we uh, we have a lot more control over working with partners and developers and cracking the whip. Um, but certainly from a personal standpoint, and I'm at home and I'm logging into my email and I'm buying something off of Amazon or Best Buy or whatever it might be. Right, there's there's no there's no log out. Right. I mean, you're never logged out. You're tracked forever into yeah. the history of, to the ends of the earth. Uh, so it is, uh, again, I think it does come back down to expectations. I did have one question though. I, I didn't get a chance to act, ask this earlier. Has anyone actually successfully done standards-based single log out? Did you try it? Well, don't all raise your hands Tried at once. Yeah. Tried it. And I assume it did not stick around. So I have my guess, but maybe why, why didn't it stick around? What was, was it just too fragile or? So uh, I work at Northern Arizona University, so we're higher ed institution. So consider that in the context of, of my answer here. That um, we, we tried it out, we still have it running, and then we kind of leave it up to the application owner as to whether they want to subscribe to that single logout philosophy or not. Or the third option is the always redirecting their users with a force off equals true kind of an idea. So where you've got those people that are they consider themselves lower risk and they subscribe to the single sign-on philosophy and you know let everybody in in a two-hour session timeout then there's the force off three equals true you know hrm type application it wants somebody to log in every single time what we really get out of that is central authentication not single sign-on and then the other philosophy of those applications that feel that the user is in a kiosk mode um, mm -hmm. they're in a library sense and that when you're logging out, what you're really doing is physically exiting the premise or exiting that compute environment, and then we let them go ahead and do that. So then we leave it up to the application owners to kind of feel their way around, and it's kind of a mess because they can stomp all over each other's toes. But what we really found was the users really didn't care all that much, and the application owners did. So giving the application owners the flexibility really solved the problem in our minds, but mm -hmm. didn't clean up the problem. Right, right. We're down to about uh, about 10 minutes, 10, 11 minutes here. Um, so I'm going to make uh, just a couple of quick comments. And, you know, thank you, Ian, for handling that so well. He, <laughs> I'm starting to hand him the mic, and he says, what are you asking me? You know, um, but a part of it is uh, I, I wanted to see if we'd start seeing the, the that difference between the at work and the at home experience. There's very different expectations. You know, at home, a lot of end users don't expect to use the same authentication when they go to you know their Gmail as they use when they go for their online banking. But I see the world evolving in that direction, right? We're starting to see more and more places use Facebook or Google or Twitter or somebody else's authentication as 
uh, acceptable to authenticate the user to get into their uh, other applications. Now, I don't know if that'll bleed into banking, of course, uh, but as a simple example of having that different expectation. And um, then, you know, also, do you use a mobile device, right? So not only do you have that desktop computer, that workstation at work or at home, but you've got your mobile device at work or at home or on the road or whatever, and how does that change the picture for login and logout too? And I'm gonna let Brian uh, comment on all of the above that he feels like. Remembering that we have 10 minutes. 10 minutes, yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know that I have a lot to add that other than the, you know, the different yeah, that there's different expectations around what's there, and typically, typically my expectation is I'm I'm logged in as long as I can be because I'd rather not authenticate again. And uh, you know, I yeah, even yeah. device device lock the device and unlock the device is better than logging into 27 apps again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and and so bet between a reasonable device locking policy, I mean, I don't have the strongest pen code in the world, but it, it's it's something, and you know, so I have a password on my machine, um, and, and hope that I don't lose that stuff. I'm, I'm personally comfortable with, with long run sessions on, on those devices. Not to mention that, you know, uh, bo all the devices I use have some level of um, corporate control of them, so that if I'm really in a bind, um, I, I can ask my IT department to wipe it remotely, um, and I, I I'm reasonably confident I can do that before someone can you know, break the, the passcode on it. Um, and I don't have that much to hide anyway, so. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I, I'm mostly okay with long-lived sessions on a device. Um, and I think that's only because most of the apps are starting to integrate with the biometric, right? So your, your kind of login experience has changed because no one likes doing any type of entry on a mobile device of text of any kind. So. We've kind of been forced into these long-lived sessions from a usability standpoint on on our on our phones, um, which I'm generally okay with. Um, but what I've found is that I don't know it, Google users, Android users, right? So the the uh, the smart unlock feature is a little frightening uh, from a corporate standpoint, right? And so you can, if for any of you iPhone users who don't know what I'm talking about or even Android users who haven't tried this, I can basically say I, my, my Samsung watch here is my trusted device, and if it's connected via Bluetooth, un, keep the device unlocked, right? Or I can geofence it. If I'm at home, remove the biometric or the PIN code to unlock my device. Now, from a corporate standpoint, I'm sure our IT guys are terrified by that, <laughs> um, especially when you start looking at out-of-band, push-to-accept, and passwordless type use cases and getting into those types of those applications. Um, so it does raise some interesting, uh, you know, it's very consumer friendly. Um, I love the feature, especially when I'm in my car and I can make my, my car Bluetooth, my trusted device, so I never have to, you know, fingerprint scan as I'm, you know, driving down the road and trying to reach behind to, to grab my fingerprint <laughs> scanner on my S8. Um, but it, it does, kind of open up, I know we're switching gears here, we're no longer talking about logout, but um, you're, you're, well, you're, you're essentially are. perpetually logged in now. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, and, and bringing it to the device level, I think uh, it, it sounds like we have a little bit of a consensus here on the panel in that, uh, you know, bringing that responsibility to the device, and there have been a lot of conversations going on all week about, uh, authenticating and re-authenticating and validating that the user is the user, not just a possessor of a credential. And I think as we move forward and we get to that, and we're talking about the passwordless and all of that kind of stuff, that helps us to deal with the logout question a little more. We get more to that uh, era of logout not really required. Now, obviously when it comes to nuclear missile codes, I want a damn logout. I, uh, sorry, it's, it's going to be there. Uh, that, that technician, and that terminal is the only one it can be done from. All right, that's important. There are some areas where that's always going to be the case. I have a lot, I live in Utah. I grew up in Idaho. I have a lot of friends in Iowa Falls area and so forth where Idaho National Laboratory and you know nuclear reactor research and things. Uh, there have been some interesting conversations about access controls 
and uh, you know logouts and locking of devices and so forth. And uh, for you know the, you, you mentioned the geofence when uh, some people are in specific buildings, there are uh, there are a couple of them where the devices are not allowed to function. Mobile devices, period, aren't allowed to even authenticate. But others for a lot of the facility where if you lock the device, you have to re-authenticate within the apps inside on certain things. And, and so obviously environment will change that uh, conversation a little bit, but I don't want to get into too many of those niches and, and, and specialize things and say, I, th I think um, we all agree that dealing with it at the device and making sure that that user is, that, is the user we expect and not just a possessor of a credential is really kind of the, the future of it. It is interesting, right? You could almost solve some of the logout by shortening your lifespans dramatically, right? True. And so from, a, from an RP perspective, <laughs> right, in a, in, a, in a more contextualized authentication space, you basically set the sessions much shorter, right? And you allow your, your centralized authentication to do more of the work. Right, and to be able to constantly do those contextualized checks and risk checks and, and do it in a passive way or an active way depending on what it is, right? Now you don't have to worry about these long-lived sessions at the RP sitting around. May not be the best solution, however, um, considering some of the fragile nature of some of the stuff we're dealing with, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something to right, right. at least consider in some situations. Um, Thank you, and uh, we, I think we have a few questions out here. We don't have a lot of time left, so I would like to uh, go ahead and open things up here, so. Thanks. So I have a suspicion that may be ill-founded, but I'd love to hear you. You okay? Love to hear your feedback on it. I suspect that our historical application development space uh, allowed us to conflate some very valid ideas like session state or application state session management, uh, authentication state and session management, and authentication evidence all down into a single kind of thing we call the, app, the, the session, right? So log in created that session and log out destroys that session, right? So does it make sense to stop conflating those and separate those out logically? So an application maintains its state in the sense of a session but doesn't maintain authentication within that session. That's something totally different. Mm -hmm. It needs authentication evidence of some sort and potentially authorization evidence of some sort, right. but it doesn't have to manage the state of that. That's, that's done somewhere else separately, i.e. Well, an IDP. And I think we kind of accidentally already have that to some extent, and, and I say accidentally, but let's, let's think about the context of all of the old applications that we've... Uh, jury rigged with SSO and you know they definitely run with their own I mean is take SAML specifically we've done our SAML assertion and now we never communicate with that authentication context with that authentication session again I create my app session and I just go on with life um, there are positives and negatives to that but I uh, as you were in the in the first part of that and we're describing that conflagration I'm sitting here thinking you know um, uh, maybe the concept of us trying to boil this down to one thing is where we're flawed a little. All right. Uh, question over here. Um, I was just going to build on that. Um, if you look at the NIST standards, the NIST standards call for two different types of session disconnects. There's, there's the logical level session disconnect. Um, and then there's the network layer session disconnect, and I think that's kind of where he was going. Um, but if you look at things like um, RDP, the RDP protocol allows a session to be disconnected, your session's still running on the server, and then you just come back and pick it up. So I think we really need to think about what it is that we really want to disconnect. Is it, is it a logical session? Do we want to end completely the user's interaction? Or do we want to allow the user to come back and re-authenticate and then pick up where he left off? I mean, you know, if you're at Amazon, you know, do you go back to the front page when you log back in, or do you go back to the shopping cart that you left when you logged out or disconnected or shut down your computer? I think it's a good question. 
Um, and, I, and I think that a, a Linux or Unix guy would have used the example of screen or tmux instead of RDP, but you know, the same, same kind of a thing applies. Any, uh, any real answer to that question? It, thank, thank you, you've stumped the panel a little bit. Um, but, I, but I think that's also characteristic of the problem. You know, logout is still a problem that has not uh, truly been addressed. And part of it, one of the easy things for us to characterize is, you know, we look at the specifications and we say, hey, they've got some great things in there, but applying that and using it is really uh, in, in a consistent way that fits the various environments or what you're doing is something that you also not only have to figure out, but you actually have to have partners that are even providing you the ability to figure that out. And I think that's another part of the problem. Um, I think a lot of people have ignored it because they said, I, you know, I give up. And so a lot of SPs out there, um, you know, for, for me, the last couple of years, I've been running the IDP side mostly. Um, where I was at prior to that, we had a lot of the SP side internally. It was all internal apps. It was all internal use, but it was the SP side. And so I've seen kind of both, both sides of that coin. And on the internal, all, the, all internal apps, SP side, that wasn't so difficult to deal with, you know, because we had a master context that all of those things really fell into. And that was in healthcare. So it was even easier, f thanks to regulatory <laughs> compliance, et cetera, to define the need and, and everything else. Uh, you know, not many of you are probably lucky enough to be where it's the, the answer is defined for you. And uh, I, I, I don't know what else to say about it there. All right, another question we have back here, uh, and another one back that way. And we are we are right at the edge of time here. We're 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 at time, so we'll go ahead and. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, so a question I had is, um, we talked about continuous sessions that just simply don't expire. If I if I heard you correctly. You talk about one of the possibilities is sessions existing indefinitely, and rather than thinking of the logout concept, is just to instead replace it with the re adaptive reauthentication concept, meaning that rather than somebody logging out of an application, well, they're always logged in, but at certain under certain conditions, we will ask them to reauthenticate. Right. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, I think somewhat. I, I think, you know, as you ask the question, it makes me think of, well, what happens if we lose that context, right? The, the device rebooted, you know, something of that nature. Um, are we just leaving salt and pepper behind in our authentication server? And, it, you know, uh, perhaps we are, perhaps we aren't. Uh, OAuth kind of gives me some thoughts about how that could be solved, but I just want to say that, yeah, that, that was pretty much what I was insinuating, and I think w what you're starting to see from from certain implementations, and my sense is a, a slow but general trend in that direction across the industry. Yeah, I'll agree with that assessment. Hey, so uh, more more of a comment than a question. We do quite a lot of single logout in our space, um, and really, at the end of the day, what you're faced with is uh, essentially bad actors who break your single logout flow, right? And so how do you work with them or work around them? Um, but I think an uh, interesting point that we sometimes use to solve our problems is uh, not necessarily um, doing single logout, but working with our partners to provide uh, session validation endpoints, right? So you sort of work a little bit around the problem, right? A uh, user arrives at a uh, web portal, for example, and the portal thinks it has a session, but then it contacts either an SP endpoint or an IDP endpoint and says, is there actually a session for the cookies that we think are stored, right? And yeah. if the answer is no, then destroy or uh, re-authenticate or things like that. So. Yeah, and I think that was kind of, you know, a lot when I touched on in my opening, is kind of that, you know, tying identity to that session, right? And keeping track of it in a way that can be uh, queried by you know by your partners or your app developers or things like that and doing that I mean that's not easy to do right that's a big that's a big change there's storage requirements right there's maintenance it's it's heavy it's a lot of processing but um, it does get you that ability to validate um, those things and destroy them 
programmatically. Right, right. Flips it on its head a little bit, but uh, really opens up and sort of broadens the flexibility, right? Because in the end, you want a good experience for the customers. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate you being here for the session. Uh, I'm going to implore one thing uh, further from you. And uh, part of the point of this was to open up the conversation. And uh, a large part of the point of it, and as I, uh, as I spoke with my fellow panelists here ahead of time, uh, inviting them to join the panel and talking about the idea and what my goal was, I mean, that's really where it is. So I implore you, please, especially those of you who are in the trenches facing these problems, tell us about them, right? Go out there uh, and, and tell us what, what is that that you're facing, what kinds of solutions or workarounds or uh, you know, bad ideas or good ideas uh, have come up there. I think that as an industry, we're not gonna really be able to move forward and tackle it uh, head on without more information from the trenches of what's really happening out there. So please share that. Uh, and I'm going to certainly feel like it's been a success if, uh, if we're seeing those stories over the next year. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, give your feedback. You can find any one of us um, through, of course, the, uh, the, the speaker profiles and contact with other questions. But uh, uh, don't just let us know. Publish it out there publicly, too. And uh, who knows, maybe uh, next year we'll have a little stronger uh, showing for solving the problem of logout. <laughs>